These are paper wasps, and they deliver quite a nasty sting. Shh, they're asleep. This is their nest. I managed to separate them from it without harming the wasp, the nest, or myself. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a wasp fall asleep. This matters because once they're asleep, you can move their nest anywhere you want. That's right, I said move them. Hear me out. Imagine for a brief moment that you're a wasp seeing a human up close for the very first time. This scene probably looks one of several ways. I will admit that I've played the role of the human here more than once, but what if instead of this, the wasp saw this? Most folks kill wasps because they don't want a stinging pest hanging around their back porch or their front door, but wasps do much more than just sting people at random. Moments ago, this caterpillar was scoping out my tomato plants with nefarious intent. Our wasp friend here put a stop to that, and for a good reason. She has sisters to feed. She is about to chew up this pesky little caterpillar and feed its regurgitated remains to her developing wasp larvae back at the nest. This means that every nest you see is a colony full of hunters constantly protecting your garden from bad actors. If left alone, they will do this all summer long. If sprayed with poison, they will die and the true victim will be your tomatoes. And this is why four years ago, I began playing around with different ideas to control where wasps build their nests. One of the first things I tried was nesting habitats. Every time I stake a plant, I put a bean can on top of the stake to prevent someone from falling on it and impaling themselves. This practice led to the accidental discovery that wasps like to build nests inside the bean cans. Thus, I went to town setting up bean can habitats for the wasps. I figured the can would be a fairly conspicuous home and that would mean less accidental encounters and stings. It actually kind of worked. Wasp nests showed up in about 50% of the cans. Not bad. There were two downsides though. The first was that the colony was limited in size due to the small diameter of the bean can. The second was this isn't very pretty and wasps can be rather snobby, so they should be pretty, if possible. To make something bigger and pretty, I bought this wine bottle cutter on Amazon. The results were fairly attractive and if you use fine grit sandpaper around the edges, it's not even that sharp, but not a single wasp built a nest in them. Perhaps the wasps wanted something more natural, so I planted some gourds for them. And to ensure the gourds were pretty enough for their refined taste, I even bought a wood burning kit to make some artistic patterns on the outside of the gourds. But did they appreciate my efforts? No. Well, not at first anyway. Eventually a few tiny nests showed up, but again, they never built the big nests inside of these homes either. The big nests kept showing up in my garden or on my house. So this is where I went entirely off the rails on a crazy train. I decided to catch the wasp, separate them from their nest, move the nest, and reintegrate the wasp back onto their nest. Simple, right? Wrong. My first intelligent attempt at this was with a shop vac. There were several problems though. The little yellow red barons were such nimble dogfighters I couldn't catch them in midair. On top of that problem, if I tried to suck them directly off their nest, I would accidentally clog the vacuum with the nest itself, rip the nest off the wall, and then get revenge attacked by a swarm of angry hymenoptera. Who could blame them? The shop vac failed because the tube inlet was too small. I happened to have an HVAC duct fan lying around from my previous rocket mass heater project. Watch that video after this one. I also had an extra cleanout cap that I modified. I also had an extra sock filter from my rain tank video. Watch that one too. Combined I had a strange t-shirt cannon looking wasp vacuum, but would it work? No. No it wouldn't. They're so angry. The problem is that compared to the shop vac, the opening of the wasp cannon is much bigger, which means slower airflow so the wasp can fly back out of it and sting me. So how on earth am I supposed to separate wasps from their nest without damaging either with this bad boy? This is a carbon dioxide tank that's commonly used in the food and beverage industry. I got this one on Amazon, along with a regulator that controls the flow rate of the gas coming out of the tank. But why does carbon dioxide make insects sleepy? <laughs> I don't know. Without delving into the pharmacology of anesthetic gases, it's a fair summary to say that animals breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Elevated blood levels of carbon dioxide in humans is a disorder called hypercapnia, 
One of the common symptoms of hypercapnia is somnolence, which is just a fancy name for sleepiness. Now, by no means did I invent this method. This is actually quite commonly used in the laboratory setting to put fruit flies to sleep for research. I'm just bringing it into my backyard. From the research I've read on insects, as long as you expose them to the gas for less than five minutes, they should be just fine. So my plan, obviously, is to expose them for less than five minutes. So this is my plan for the wasps. Here we are on the hot box porch. It's about 103 degrees and I got my rig set up. I'm ready to roll. I got about a thousand PSI in my CO2 tank here and I'm running a 28 PSI for the flow. Here we have just a standard Amazon purchase clear funnel, a bit of hose from the auto parts store, a random PVC fitting that just serves to kind of sit on there with some friction so the hose doesn't pull through and then a PVC pipe that will just hold the whole thing so I can stick it up against the wasp nest. Now you're gonna be able to see me use this for its inaugural trial in real time. I am not wearing a bee suit, even though I do own one. That's because I am either extremely confident or extremely stupid. You, the viewer, are about to find out which it will be. This scene will end in either some caught wasps or a screaming me. Here we go. And they're out. Man, that is crazy. Just some CO2. And if you want the cool wasp sticker or t-shirt, they can be found in my merch store below. Because the funnel shape will only sometimes fit over a wasp nest, I needed to come up with an airtight enclosure in custom shapes. After playing around with a few different clear plastic funnels, I ultimately salvaged some plastic containers from our waste bin. I trimmed these to whatever shape was needed to fit tightly around any given wasp nest. And then I went Sandman on every nest that was in my way. What came of each nest? I put them where I wanted them. I made some mounting awnings out of 1x8 boards. When I zonked my wasp friends, I transferred each colony to a sock filter and locked them inside. Then I transferred each nest to a mounting awning and glued it there in an upside down position, making sure not to hurt the larvae inside the nest. After the nest was secured, I mounted the board where I wanted it along my pipe fence. You should watch the fence video too. Then I placed the sock filter full of wasps around their nest and fastened it there. I opened the clamp and let the wasps get reacquainted with their nest.
After sunset, when the wasps are much more likely to stay put, I remove the sock filter, and by morning, I had a fence full of wasps and not a sting on me. I chose the fence because it's an obvious landmark and I can't walk through it anyway, so I'm less likely to get stung by a wasp for bumping their nest. If you're still watching, you might be the kind of folk that wants to know a bit more about wasps, so let's do a quick rundown of the life cycle of a paper wasp. A pregnant queen emerges from her winter hiding place in early spring. The queen starts a nest by building the first few cells. She makes the cells out of chewed up wood fibers. Then she lays eggs in them. The eggs grow into larvae. The queen feeds the larvae a diet of chewed up insects. The larvae knit a silk cap on their cell. They pupate and metamorphose into adult wasps. The adult wasps chew their way out of their silk cap cell. The female workers take over the duty of building nest cells out of chewed up wood pulp. The worker females also take over the work of hunting for and feeding the larvae. Towards the end of summer, the queen starts to lay more male eggs. When these males emerge as adults, they go out and mate with females from other colonies. When impregnated, these females find a hiding place to remain dormant over winter. All of the summer nests dwindle toward the end of the season and the entire colony dies except for the dormant queens. Once winter passes, the queen emerges and starts up the next colony at the beginning of the next summer. Unless the colony happens to survive the winter without dying, wasps do not reuse nests the next year. I'm betting there are going to be a fair amount of people that think, yeah, that's an interesting concept, but I'm never going to do it. I'll tell you what, if you appreciate the time, effort, and presentation that I did, do me a favor, share this video with someone that either hates wasps, or loves wasps, or just doesn't know about wasps. My hope is that the world might realize wasps are not nearly as bad as many people think they are. As is often the case for a project like this, I'm left with many questions. For example, within about four days of mounting the biggest nest on the fence behind me, it went missing. Now I'm not sure what happened to it, but from the brake pattern on the nest, it's pretty obvious that the glue held up just fine. All the other nests are doing okay. So it stands to reason that some predator of some sort thought it was worth it to get attacked, but get to eat the biggest nest. I'm guessing it's because it had the most grubs inside of it. But what kind of predator has the guts to do that? A raccoon? Maybe a bird? A lot of these topics are too niche to do well on YouTube, so I'm going to cover these in Patreon exclusive videos. So if you find yourself curious, check out my Patreon account in the link below. In the description, I'm going to include a list of the cheapest components I could find on Amazon that will help you build your own bug snoozer. I'll have a separate list of the exact components I used, but those weren't the most affordable ones I could find. As an Amazon affiliate, I do earn from qualifying purchases, so if you want to help out the channel and me, that's a way of doing it. If you check that list out though, you'll notice that even the cheapest bug snoozer costs about $160 or so. A lifetime supply of wasp poison probably costs about $100. Is it worth the difference? I've already told you why I think it is, but what do you think? I may not be able to change what you think, but maybe I can change what you think about. In the next one to two videos, I plan on starting my giant greenhouse project. It's going to be sub-irrigated and self-heating. So if that sounds interesting to you, remember to click the subscribe button and also turn on notifications. Sometimes people that are really interested in the topic won't get alerted just because I put out a video, but if you turn on notifications, that helps. That's gonna do it for this one. I'll see you on the next one.